Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be simplifying a quick and easy trigonometric expression. We have 1 over 1 plus cosine x plus 1 over 1 plus secant x and we're going to write this expression in the simplest form. So first of all I want you to notice that secant and cosine are reciprocals so they have a special relationship. At the end I'm going to show you a graph which kind of explains what is going on here. So we're going to generalize the results. So let's go ahead and get to work. I'll probably present a couple methods. First one will be more technical. The others are less technical and less rigorous. Let's start with the first method. Now notice that secant x can be written as 1 over cosine x. That's what I mean by reciprocals. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Let's go ahead and write it that way. We get 1 over 1 plus cosine x plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over cosine x. So replace secant with 1 over cosine and then make a common denominator if you want. But I like multiplying by something better. It's pretty much the same thing as multiplying, um, making a common denominator. But I'd rather multiply the top and the bottom by cosine x here and leave the first one alone for now. 1 over 1 plus cosine x. And when you multiply by cosine x, you're going to get cosine x in the denominator, I mean numerator, because 1 times cosine x. And at the bottom, you've got to distribute this. 1 times cosine x is cosine x. And 1 over cosine x times cosine x is just 1. And what do you notice? You notice that these two fractions have the same denominator. They kind of look different, right? But if you write the second denominator as 1 over... 1 plus cosine x, or cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. Now you know, you, you'll see that they have the same denominator, which means we can just add the numerators. That's going to give us 1 plus cosine x divided by 1 plus cosine x, and that should equal 1, as long as cosine x does not equal negative 1. Under those conditions, of course, we also need that requirement for cosine x not being equal to negative 1 at the beginning because that was the denominator. And of course, if cosine x is negative 1, secant will also be negative 1. Okay, so under those conditions, we found that our expression simplifies to 1. A lot of times, trigonometric expressions will simplify to 1. If you have to guess, then <laughs> it will be wise to go with 1. But don't quote me on that. Okay, so that's one of the methods that we can use. A second method we can utilize, but this method is basically depending on the type of problem. If this is a test set where you have to show your work, this may not fly by the professor, but if it's a multiple choice test, go for it. So when you are trying to simplify a trigonometric expression, and especially if you have a multiple choice where you see the choices, you can test out some values. For example, I can just plug in x equals 0 if possible, x equals pi over 2, x equals pi over 4. So those special values. And of course, after plugging in those, I'm going to get a numerical value from here, from my expression. And then I will substitute the exact same values in the ch answer choices. And whichever one gives me the right answer will be the right answer. But sometimes you get more than one, so you got to keep trying. That's why it's a good idea to use multiple values. If you get it on the first try, then go for it. But you can go ahead and test, could we use zero? First of all, think about it. Well, cosine zero is one, so we're good. Secant is defined. Remember, secant is not defined when cosine x is zero. That will be pi over two and three pi over two. Anyways, we can use zero, that's fine. Let's go ahead and plug in zero here. We're gonna get one over one plus one, plus one over one plus one. And this gives me 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. So I got 1, but that doesn't guarantee the answer is going to be 1, because what if the answer is cosine x? Because cosine x is also 1 for 0, right? So that's why I need to kind of keep checking. I don't have choices, but I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate this method here. Can I use something else? Maybe x equals pi over 4. But that's probably going to be better because of the radicals, all right? the radical expression, so they're going to be involved. So let's go ahead and write it this way, 1 over 1 plus. What is cosine pi over 4? Hmm. I think it's 1 over root 2, and then secant is going to be the reciprocal, so it's just root 2. I didn't use root 2 over root, root 2 over 2 because then its reciprocal would be uh, 2 over root 2, which is root 2 again, but anyways, what, it doesn't matter, no big deal. 
So now let's go ahead and make a common denominator or multiply by root 2. You're going to get uh, root 2 plus 1 over root 2. Flip and multiply, you're going to get this. And then here you're going to get 1 over 1 plus root 2. As before, we're getting this plus this, root 2 plus 1, divided by root 2 plus 1, which is equal to 1. Again, you can try different values, but notice that with two values we were able to get 1. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to be 1. But again, you can continue to test different values. So at this point, I want to show you the graph of uh, a function, which is this one. And this should be familiar because think about it, our original problem, if t is equal to cosine x, and that's what we had, right? As a general, and here t values are not specified, and as you can see, we have a horizontal line that goes through 0, 1. What does that mean? It means that y is identically 1 for all values of t except for t equals negative 1 and t equals 0. Make sense? Except those, of course, Desmos doesn't exclude those. Too bad, but that's what it is. So this kind of shows you that this is going to be 1 as well, but you can also algebraically prove that by multiplying by t again or making a common denominator, you're going to get 1 plus t over 1 plus t, which is equal to 1. And this verifies one more time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.